You ever see someone when they squat, they come down nicely with the trunk nice and upright, only to get to the bottom, and then the way they come back up, they initiate it by lifting their hips to rise first, and then their trunk. So it looks basically when they squat down and then the bottom, to come back up, they have to stick their butt out, and then they come up. What that does, not that there's anything wrong with that, unless you understand what's actually going on, that type of patterning tends to load the lower back a little bit more than necessary, especially if you have a barbell or some kind of loaded implement on top of you. And then when you initiate the movement from the hips first, it brings the trunk forward more, center of mass goes forward, more stress on the lower back or the back muscles in general so that you don't fall forward. So I guess the question would be, why do people do that in the first place? Well, there's many possibilities, but what I find from my experience, number one is their relationship with the ground. That could be a little bit uh, improved or better in that they may have a good connection to the floor when they initiate the movement and definitely as they lower themselves into the movement. But once they're at the bottom, I don't think there's a connection and they lose it. And all it takes is like a fraction or a millimeter or a small amount of movement or displacement to throw your center of mass off, which is going to force your nervous system to compensate and find the most usable strategy immediately to get you out of that position. So what commonly happens is at that bottom of the squat, people in general, not saying everybody, in general tend to weight bear more towards their forefoot or the front part of their feet. And basically they lose contact or sensation or awareness of the heel or the back of their foot in association with the front of the foot to have that complete suctioning into the ground. So imagine if you have more weight forward onto the balls of your feet on the bottom of a squat and you have weight in front of you or in back of you during a back squat or a front squat and how that weight is trying to weigh you down and you have to counter that but you just narrowed your base of support from going from two whole feet to the front part of your feet. So you're going to compensate either too far forward or too far back. So in this case, you're already forward, so something has to go back. So to prevent you from falling forward and crushing yourself into the ground, usually the brain says, ass up, get your stripper butt up. And then that usually solves the problem and the person's able to stand upright. But as I said, under greater amounts of load, that creates greater amounts of stress to the lower back. So, solution to that is train yourself with lighter weights or even just your body weight. What I call suction your feet into the floor where no part of your feet or your shoe comes off the floor as you, not just as you go down into a squat and you're holding at the bottom, but also as you come up. There should be no part of the movement where your feet lose contact with the floor. Understand when there is, you may or may not be aware of this, but understand that that will be compensated for somewhere else in your body because that's what your nervous system does. It's there to protect you, but it's only gonna protect you to the point or to the degree of strategies or patterns that it's aware of. So basically it's use it or lose it all over again where you have to understand or experience different patterns for that nervous system so that it can use it to use it in its repertoire. So. That's the first thing, is contact with the ground. Suction your feet into the floor. The next thing I usually see or usually recommend is once you have that floor contact, is again, get yourself, keep your trunk as upright as you can, and then use your legs to lift you up, okay? That cue is forcing you to use your legs more while your muscles in your upper body are isometrically stabilizing you, controlling you to stay in an upright position. Now, I'm not just saying stay upright, use your back muscles. No, you gotta use this whole cylinder thing of what we call your rib cage, pelvis, shoulder girdle, 
okay? So they have to get in a good alignment, a good solid unit, so that your legs are the primary movers of the squat. Let them do the work. You have to get your upper body in position so that it can hold that weight. So the brain doesn't have to worry about, er, I just hurt my back, I just, whatever. If you're like a Blaine Sumner's or whatever, the, the guy who, you know, super heavyweight squats over thousands of pounds, works with Stu McGill and has hurt his back from heavy squatting. Well, when you lift heavy weights, it takes a little bit of being at the wrong place in the wrong moment. It doesn't take much to create a pattern that can create an injury because the brain is always trying to protect you. And if you're not aware of these little nuances or these little refined things, all it takes is a fraction of a second can make or break your career or make or break literally your spine. So understand positioning of your upper body in the bottom of a squat along with good grounding or suction suctioning of your feet with the ground. That will tell your brain right away that sticking your ass out probably isn't the best strategy. That'll keep your, uh, your legs, get them nice and strong, but your trunk has to be even stronger because it's holding you together so the legs can actually move you. And if you can't do that under load, lighten the load. That's what training's for. Train yourself so that you can get to that point where you could stick the form with as heavy amount of weight you can before it breaks you, literally and metaphorically.